As a true internet dweller, I love copper wiring. And I love screwing around with it nearly as much as any English teacher loves screwing around with their students asking them what's the meaning of blue curtains in a Shakespearean play. So in today's newest episode of Making Chemicals You Shouldn't Have Out of Household Materials You Do, we will be making copper carbonate. Copper carbonate, which we will be making today, is the after version of copper hydroxide, which this reaction is supposed to yield. We'll be making it out of copper wiring, water and electricity. Though copper carbonate and copper hydroxide are two different molecules, in functionality they're basically the same. They're both a pretty blue color and they can both make copper molecules. This process in reality is very simple. Unfortunately, I find too much people using things like copper sulfate or something like that. You might as well just get copper carbonate at that point. So basically what we need to do is plug two copper electrodes into a cup of distilled water. Now we add a little bit of salt into the mixture. Any type of salt works, iodized, not iodized, road salt, use anything as long as it conducts electricity. Now I wouldn't recommend adding a lot of salt into this as salt is a pain to remove with limited equipment so only enough for it to conduct. So after which we get a 9 volt battery and we plug it into the two electrodes. Doesn't really matter what side you plug in with. Where it's both copper on both sides. And now we leave it like this for the night. We wait till morning to see the results. In the meantime, let's examine the reaction. By electrocuting salty water we get sodium ions and chloride ions. As sodium is a highly reactive element, it reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Chloride is also a highly reactive ion, so it reacts with copper to make copper chloride. Copper chloride then is rather unreactive and sodium hydroxide is reactive. So what happens from that point on, they react together as in a double displacement reaction to form the starting table salt and copper hydroxide. There should be a 2 around this and brackets. So this thing is supposed to look like this. Copper hydroxide then reacts with carbon dioxide to form copper carbonate and water two days later so i've waited two days because the reaction was slow and i came back to the solution looking blue and with the precipitate forming at the top and at the bottom the precipitate is a mixture of copper hydroxide and copper carbonate as both of those molecules are insoluble therefore floating around like this the electrodes which I used have become a rather unusual color. The negative electrode has become a greenish color. If I bring it up to the camera, you can see that would be the, co the copper chloride, which is a green color in nature. And if we bring the other one up, we can see that it's become this, br this black color. That would be copper oxide. That's a bit of precipitate, which is still left on it, but for the most part, it's copper oxide. Now, the reason it became copper carbonate from copper hydroxide is because copper hydroxide is a very aggressive molecule, as aggressive as a, as a pit bull named Princess. Therefore, it reacted with the carbon dioxide and formed carbon, uh, copper carbonate. So for the next step, we need to dry the solution to get all of the copper carbonate out. Usually a normal person can do this using a vacuum filter, however I am not a normal person, so I would let the water evaporate. 
Now, before we sit for a week waiting for a cup's worth of water to evaporate, it's worth mentioning that the only precipitate in this is really at the bottom, so we can remove the water at the top however we want. I usually use a syringe for this, so we just get some, pour some into another cup and repeat this process until there's hardly any more water left. So we really just went from needing to evaporate an entire glass of water to just needing to evaporate this little bit of water before we can actually get pure copper hydroxide or carbonate. Some time later. Now after waiting a few days worth of time I managed to dry up all of the water and I was left with this blue powder. I didn't get much of it, roughly this much. The jar on the right here is how much I had before. To get as much as I did over here, I had to run the electrolyzer for like a week on several batteries. So if we want to test out whether or not it's truly copper carbonate uh, hydroxide, we could, I prepared a glass of water over here. This is pure H2O. So I'll grab this, I'll pour this into the, the cup, see how well that works out. Now if I bring this up to the camera, you can see that it's not really dissolving inside of it. It's mostly staying insoluble as a powder. Now if I were to grab and add some white vinegar into this mixture. And wait a bit of time. As you can see, after waiting like half a minute, it became blue, this bluish color. And the precipitate became green, as copper carbonate is a bit harder to react with acetic acid than copper hydroxide. If we bring this up to the camera, you can really see that it's much more blue than it previously was. The black debris floating around with it would be copper oxide, which I got by putting this thing in the oven. I tried to speed up the evaporation process by putting it at a low temperature which you can probably do, except I'm pretty sure it burnt a bit of copper, hence the blue stuff. It's much more, hence the black stuff. As you can see, it's much more blue and there is blue clouds of water around the parts where there is the most precipitate. Right then, and that's how you make a pretty blue colored powder or solution out of literal copper wiring. Right then, till next time. See ya.